A very warm welcome to St. James's Plough Sunday service. This is a joint service between St. James's in Streatham and St. George's in Little Thetford. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ellen Leake and I'm a licensed lay minister here at St. James's. Due to our country going back into lockdown because of the current worsening of the coronavirus pandemic, our church has decided to exclusively go online in accordance with the recommendations from Reverend Chris Hill, the rector of the Ely team of churches of which we are a part. Please do join us at 1130 on Sundays for a Zoom social gathering. And if you need the login details for that meeting, please do contact us. We pray that this service is a blessing to you and that each and every one of you have a meaningful encounter with God during our service today. We start our Plow Sunday service with some words from Kia Petherick, who is one of our local farmers and is joining us today representing our local farming community. We come to this church service to offer the work of the countryside in the service of God and we bring with us this plough, it's quite big, as a symbol of our work to maintain the life of mankind. We warmly welcome the farming community in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and recall the words of the psalmist from Psalm 146 verse 6. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. And our first song today is Lord I Come to You.
Please join me in the following responsive reading by saying out loud the words in bold yellow. The earth is the Lord's, and, and all, all that, that is therein. therein. The Lord looked upon the earth and, and filled, filled it with his, his blessings. blessings. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and, and summer and winter, and, and day and, and night, shall not cease. The eyes of all look to you, and, and you give, give them their food at the proper time. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and, and holy in, in all of his works. In his hands are all the corners of the earth, and, and the strength, strength of, of the, the hills, hills is, is his, his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and, and his, his hands prepared the dry land. land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and, and kneel before the, the Lord our Maker. O oh, give thanks to the Lord our God, for he is gracious, and, and his, his mercy endures forever. forever. We come now to that time in our service where we say sorry to God for the thing, things that we have done wrong and ask for forgiveness. Let us begin our prayer time by saying together verse 62 from Luke chapter 9. Together we say, Jesus said, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer, and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive, forgive us and, and help us. us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, Forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, Forgive, forgive us and, and help us. Give, give us thankful hearts and a loving concern for all people. Through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And today's column. A special prayer for today. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us, who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have our second song, We Plow the Fields and Scatter.
comes from Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And our second reading is from James, chapter 5, verse 7 to 12. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop. Patiently wait for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And now, Claire McGinley from St George's Little Thetford will bring us the sermon. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, um, as we think about these scriptures that we've just heard, um, we ask that you will draw out to us what you want us to hear. Um, that you'll sift through these little snippets of your word this morning. Um, you'll speak to our hearts. And we'll learn something more of you. Amen. 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 Well, we've, um, we've heard those little bits of scripture, um, that one from Isaiah that was written around 700 to 680 BC, those prophetic words um, about something in the future that was, was for, for certain going to happen. The mountain of the Lord where all nations would stream to it, um, God's house will be established, there'll be a, a new time of peace. Those lovely words about swords being turned into plowshares and that call to walk in the light of the Lord, to walk in his paths, that he might teach us his ways. Um, in that scripture we heard it says, in the last days it will be established that walking closely, being taught by him, a promise, a certain promise of, of the future. And then in the other scripture from James, from James chapter 5, um, James is encouraging the church. He's saying, have patience in suffering. Um, 
And he, he shows that example of waiting. It's like waiting for the land to yield its crop. He says, be patient for the rains in season, stand firm, establish your hearts, don't grumble. Um, he gives examples of people that have persevered in their faith. And he reminds us of God's compassion and mercy. Stand firm. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't be confused, don't be weak, don't be lacking. Be steadfast. So I thought about those two scriptures um, and hopefully they'll, they'll encourage us today. Um, also, uh, recently in, in some Christmas cards, I've had some little scriptures given to me. Um, one card simply said, stay strong. And one card had a verse from Romans 12 in it. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, um, faithful, ceaseless in prayer. Some other encouraging words. And then I, I thought both of those scriptures are so relevant to our time now, to our situation that we're in. Um, they're calling us to persevere, to remain faithful and remember God's promise that he's faithful, he's compassionate, to remember that he is at work establishing all things. But then I thought, what really stands out, what links those two to me that I want to just touch on this morning is the call to walk closely. They're both to me, um, reminding me about walking closely. So hopefully these little strands will, will just, I've, I've put together just some little strands of thoughts really um, about how those fit together for me. Anyway, um, it's, it's great to be here in, in Streatham. It's, it's funny because um, I've got a memory. Um, the first time I remember being in Streatham Church was when I was a bridesmaid um, for a great aunt who um, was, I think she was about the third generation of her family to live in Streatham. And I remember three things about that day. <laughs> I remember what we wore. I was about six or seven and I wore a red suit with white knee socks and uh, so did my sister. Um, the other thing I remember was that everyone was smiling and happy and the, the last thing I remember was that it was extremely cold. <laughs> I thought that, that was quite funny. Um, my aunt was one of those amazing characters who prayed and she prayed for me. She had a strong faith. Um, she walked closely with God. It was just obvious in her life, you could tell. Um, she always came home to Streatham from her travels. She was a very well-travelled lady, um, but she always came home to Streatham from where she was working um, to rest. Um, Streatham remained her sense of home for her. Uh, it was really noticeable, um, but really also you just knew, even as a young child and a teenager, I could tell her real security was in Christ and just in him alone. He was her rest. Um, her, her real home was in him. Um, it's funny to, to describe, but I could just tell that's how her life was. And uh, at the end, I want, I want to share a poem about um, it's, quite, it's a quite well-known poem, but it's, it was given to me by another person um, that I've known for many years. Um, but I'll share it because it's also about walking closely with God. So um, that's two, two examples of, of people who walked closely with God. Um, the person that um, gave me the poem that I'll read in, in a while um, chose to walk with God from a really early age. Um, really, it was like a means of survival for her, I think. In a difficult childhood, um, she could simply see no other way to walk that, that would do. There was nothing else would do. And that determination stayed with her all her life. Um, and it was like a joy that welled up in her 
and it kept her walking through difficulties. It wasn't um, particularly religious, it wasn't an extremely religious thing, but it was so obvious to me, it was like a relationship, it was like a friendship with God that this person had. A lovely childlike faith that never left her. So two people of encouragement, two examples of, of walking closely, walking with him. So how do we do that? How, how, how can we possibly walk with him? How can we walk with assurance and simplicity? How do we let the life of the Holy Spirit bring our faith alive? That's such a, such a big question. How, do we, how, do, how is our faith alive and real and relevant? How, what, what use is it to us? How, how, is, it, how is it relevant? Um, that faith that James speaks of in that scripture we've heard, that assurance of the future that Isaiah speaks of in that scripture we've just heard. How do we come to know him? For me, it's always been just choosing, just choosing to and, and inviting him by leaning into his spirit. Um, a bit like navigating, almost um, perhaps that image of a boat where you have to, I'm not quite sure about how it works, but you have to lean into the wind to get into the right direction to, to navigate, um, to lean into him. And, the, and it's, it's a funny thing, is, it is, that he wants our undivided loyalty. He wants to be walking with us in a place where our hearts are so established in him that we don't waver, we just rejoice in that knowledge <coughs> of him. That not wavering, that being, let your yes be yes, let your no be no, just know that he's there, that he's for us. Because he says so, because it's in his word, because he says so. I often think of when, um, you think of a young child starting school, when, when I always think of one of our children when he started school, um, everything that the, the reception teacher said, that was it. That was, that was the firm word. It's, well, Mrs. Mrs. Vivian says so, that's how it is. That's it. Everything was because Mrs. Vivian said so. That assurance, that, that solidity. Um, I wonder if that's, that's how he wants us to be. So secure. Paul speaks um, so much. Amazing that we've got all those scriptures about how that close relationship with Christ was so important to him. His heart was established in him. And I, I often remember um, a favourite scripture of mine in Acts 17, <coughs> where um, Paul is speaking very nervously to the people of Athens. And he says, um, you're searching for me, but I'm already here. I'm already with you. I'm not far from any one of you. In me, you live and move and have your being. I'm here with you. So, um, we all know we've had to slow down this last year. Um, I wonder, I don't know about you, but I wonder through it all, has he been calling us to a new sense of closeness? Has he been calling us to come and sit with him, to set aside other things? We've had to set aside so many things, haven't we? Um, has he been calling us to put him first in our lives amidst it all, calling us to walk humbly, calling us to walk a new way where we hear his voice, maybe for the first time, but maybe hear his voice more easily than before, hear that he really is the good shepherd that he says he is, he says he is, therefore he is. Maybe calling us to lean into his spirit, to sense that immense outpouring of grace. We can hear him 
well for me it's how it feels that we can hear him because we know it's his voice because he's always affirming he's always gentle he always protects and yet he's always strong he's always for us he's always personal he's not a far off god he's one who drew close Emmanuel and I like that promise how he says he's gone before he's prepared the way he's made a path for us um, he's cleared a few brambles away as well making making the way clear for us and I often sometimes also go back to that promise that he sometimes lifts us up in his arms when the going gets tough. He says, I've carried you. You didn't know it, maybe, but I've been carrying you. Every time we sing, um, there's a carol, and I'm wondering whether I've got the right name of the carol, In the Bleak Midwinter. But I think it might be Good King Wenceslas. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, you'll, you'll recognise the carol because it says, In his master's steps he trod, where the snow lay dinted. Do you remember that carol? <laughs> it's in his master's steps he trod, where the snow lay dinted. He was in the very sod which the master printed, that clod of earth. It was still warm, it was still warm because he followed so closely in his master's footsteps um, and he followed it the most closely where the snow was deepest, where it was hardest to walk, so closely that the heat was still coming off. I like that image. Regardless of which carol it's in, I love that image. Um, great great to, to remember, for me anyway. Um, that image is staying close to the Lord. So this strange historical time that we're in now seems to be, more than ever, a time to draw near to him, to hear his voice calling us, to come home if we've been away. A bit like my aunt who used to come home to Streatham. A call to come home and follow him closely, to walk humbly, and know that he is for us, he loves us with an everlasting love. And it seems to me to have been a time, more than any I can remember, to draw near with faith and just put my hand in his and to tread in his footsteps to hear his voice speaking. And also to make sure I don't listen to the voice of a stranger, um, to make sure I've got a single eye as it were, to not be distracted. Um, and also today, because it's Plough Sunday, one of the readings we could have had was the parable of the sower. And that, that well-known passage about the seed being dispersed and getting going astray, going to, into all different places where it couldn't um, germinate and grow. Um, and those seeds of faith in the soil of our hearts um, for me, I've, I've had to remember not to let ne not to let those seeds be choked by distractions or by neglect. To not let anything destroy my peace. Nothing to destroy that 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 seed of faith growing deep down, keeping on growing down into the soil of God's love. I love that image of the seed putting down roots. And growing deep into the soil of God's love and eventually producing fruit. So, so many things we could say, so many things that came to me from these two scriptures. Um, and just, to, just to keep remembering that God is, is like a spring within us, a spring that wells up, a spring we can drink from and be refreshed. And, and to know him closely in that way through the Holy Spirit is such a great joy. That joy that, that and we think of that joy at Christmas when we say Happy Christmas, but that joy all year round. And it's so amazing, it keeps welling up 
to, yeah, that, that joy that wells up through the Holy Spirit like a spring. I asked someone recently what I could give someone. I wanted to thank someone for something and I said, what can I give them? And they said, hmm, well, they just want a conversation. That's all they want. They just want a conversation. And even that's been challenging, hasn't it, to have a conversation recently. <laughs> um, for face-to-face -face conversations. But it seems to me that over this time, and for going into this new year, that that's what God wants. He wants a conversation with us, with each of us. Perhaps for the first time, but perhaps a deeper conversation, a more ongoing conversation, for us to walk along with him um, and for us to no longer feel alone but to know he's he's with us maybe it's that old conversation that he says where the one that conversation where he says remember i've loved you with an everlasting love you are my beloved maybe it's that conversation maybe it's more whatever it is it's so personal So I think um, I'll just close with the, that poem that I said I was going to read, that the other, the other person um, who had a faith gave to me. It's quite a well-known poem. It was written in um, 1908, I think, by Minnie Haskins. It's been used publicly um, for times of encouragement. Um, it was used um, at the beginning of the of, of a time of war um, in 1939. It was used at the, the Queen Mother's funeral. Um, it's just, yeah, it might be really well known to you, um, but I've only recently come to hear it um, given to me by this person. So, so here we go. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than a light and safer than a way known. So I went forth and finding the hand of God, trod glad gladly into the, light, into the night. I went forth, finding the hand of God, trod gladly into the night. He led me towards the hills and the breaking of the day in the lone east. So heart be still, what need our human life to know if God hath comprehension? In all the dizzy strife of things, both high and low, God hideth his intention. God knows, his will is best. The stretch of years which wind ahead, so dim to our imperfect vision, are clear to God. Our fears are premature in him. All time have full provision. Then rest, until God moves, to lift the veil from our impatient eyes when, as the sweeter features of life's stern face we hail, fair beyond all surmise, God's thought around his creatures our minds shall fill.
Let's quietly meditate as Claire brings us a poem that she has written. It's easy to find me. Don't look too hard. I'll be at the bus station somewhere, waiting with people. I'm there. I'm at the bin, being searched for leftovers. I'm in the hospice, cleaning the floor or at the school assembly cheering on. I'm beside the waves, by the farmer's herd. I'm not where you think, though I'm there as well. Sometimes I'm mostly unexpected and where we need hope, that's where you'll find me. I'm a hand held a message received, a flower, a cake, your plate of food, a friend. You'll find me in a traffic jam. I'm where it's cold all night. It's easy to find me. I'm a conversation, a greeting, I'm not where you expect me. I'm a spring of joy in bleakness from an unseen stream. That's been me for as long as anyone can remember. It's easy to find me. And now we go back to the plow where Olivia Petherick and her children will bring us our prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, at this time of the year, we think of those less fortunate than us. We think about those in Africa, those who slave away all day in the burning sun, sowing the crops in order to make enough for everyone. We ask that you help them through this season and every season with happiness and joy and love. Please be with them in this hard time, full of uncertainty and fear. Please guide them through this virus with the strength and resilience to keep themselves and their families safe and to keep everyone's spirits high. Please help everyone and look after all the farmers worldwide and let them know how thankful we all are for everything they do to keep the world fed and everyone happy. Thank you, Father. Lord of creation, in your mercy, we hear our prayers. You are the ultimate healer, Father. We come before you to pray for those who infected with the virus. We pray not only for their healing, but their, for, for them to be comfortable while they heal. Lord, please eradicate every ounce of this virus from their bodies. Please heal every cell in their bodies, every infected part of their being. We pray for no lasting effects in their bodies from this illness. Please help everyone who is shielding and everyone who, is hurt, who has been hurt by this virus. 
Baba, Lord of creation, in your mercy hear us. Creator God, you gave, give us the amazing gift of soil in which crops grow to feed both humans and animals. Grant us wisdom as we seek to work with you in harmony with nature in maintaining soil fertility and proper drainage. As we plant successive crops, we trust you for the miracle of growth, enabled by the balance of light, warmth, nutrients and moisture to produce an abundant crop. Keep us alert to maintain and use our farm machinery carefully and give us pride and satisfaction in our work. Grant us patience to weather the storm, to keep our faith strong and our patient and love with each other in the same way that the farmer patiently waits for the crops to grow. This we pray in the name of Christ, who set his hand in the plough and did not look back. Lord of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Heavenly Father, please look after and nurture us through this time of the year. We think of the agricultural calendar and how they are currently sowing the seeds for which they will watch over and grow into something very special. We think of you, Father, and how you planted us, your seeds on your glorious planet. We thank you for the nurturing and looking after us this season and always. Thank you for watching us grow and for being there with us every step of the way as you grow us into something amazing, strong, human beings as we all are. Thank you for guiding us through the best and the worst times and for teaching us so many lessons and um, being with us, making us all into who we are today. Thank you, Father. Lord of creation, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As our, our Saviour Savior taught, taught us, so, so we pray. pray. Our, our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The plough is a symbol of all our labour in the countryside. It is the foundation of the farmer's work. Before the soil can be broken, the seed sown or the corn grown, we must plough the field. So the beginning of another year, we bring this plough to this church service as a symbol of our work. God's blessing may be given to us and all that work and workers of the farms. God speed the plough, the plough and the ploughman the farm and the farmer, machine and beast, man and woman. God speed the plow, in fair weather and in foul, in success and in disappointment, in rain and wind, in frost and in sunshine. God speed the plow. God speed the plow. We'll have our final hymn, In Christ Alone. My strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, 
my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone Who took on flesh Fullness of God in helpless pain this gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I Light of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the grave he rose again And as he stands in victory Since curse has lost its grip on me And now for a blessing. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon us, his children, that we may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and dwell within you this day and evermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 
In the the name name of Christ, Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for our special Plow Sunday service. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel where we post our weekly Sunday services. You can also find us on St. James's Facebook page for live streamed morning prayers on Mondays and Wednesdays at 9.15 a.m. Please do join us for our Sunday morning Zoom social time at 11.30 if you are able to do so. We pray that you have a safe and blessed week.